Imagine that you just had a really good day, and I'm talking about one of those days where somebody you don't like tried to say something slick, and you had a good comeback waiting for them. <laughs> or if you want to take the more inspiring route, one of those days where you find out some good news, like you got accepted into graduate school, or you got a raise, or you reached your goal weight, or you learned how to make eggs for the first time, which is something that comes pretty late for a lot of college students. But for whatever reason, you had a good day, and you go to one of your friends to tell them about it. You start telling them, and you're super excited and enthusiastic, and they're nodding and paying attention. But before you even get to the best part, you hear a buzz or a ding, and your friend keeps nodding, acting like they're paying attention. And in the middle of your fantastic day, they decide to respond to a text message. Now, although in a small way, your friend just chose to acknowledge someone else's conversation over yours. And you probably don't make a big deal out of it because it happens to everybody. Everybody's busy. It's not you, it's them. But don't we all do this? Are we all sometimes that friend? We should all be nodding, including my mom. <laughs> We've all experienced similar situations and we don't make a big deal out of it because life is fast paced and we have to keep it moving like we have no choice. You don't have to wait to communicate with anyone. You can talk to 10 people at a time if you wanted and you can talk to someone halfway across the world in a couple of seconds. And you don't have to go to the library to investigate a topic you're interested in because you can just Google it on your phone. And you can do anything while you're using a phone. You can be eating, exercising, studying, having a conversation, kill two birds with one stone. But it seems like nobody's thinking about the effects of using our cell phones in almost everything we do, which is why I'd like to take the less preferred route of killing one bird with three stones, curiosity, connection, and creativity. So curiosity is first because I can't just tell people to stop using their phones. People, like, people don't like being told what to do. And the best way to do that is by sharing how my own curiosity allowed me to research cell phone interruptions in the first place. And that's simple because I became curious after all the times that I got interrupted by a cell phone. I can remember numerous times sitting in class or at work when I'm suddenly aware of someone's phone call because I can hear the Walking Dead theme song. What's even worse is how casual cell phone interference has affected my 16-year-old sister if you don't believe anything else I say, believe that she can type a long, flawless text message while looking you dead in your eyes. <laughs> and just a side note, I felt some type of way when I found her texting while we were watching The Notebook. So with all this cell phone use getting out of hand, I decided to do further research. As a psychology student and a member of, Mc of McNair Scholars Program, I started a full investigation under the mentoring of community psychology professor, Dr. Gregory Meissen. I conducted a, a survey here on campus to gauge students' perceptions towards cell phone interruptions. I wanted to know more about how WSU students felt when their communication was blocked by a sudden desire to respond to a text message or the inability to ignore a phone call. With the information I gathered, I found that I wasn't the only one bothered by this and I didn't find a single participant that didn't have a negative perception towards cell phone interruptions. As a matter of fact, the majority strongly dislike them, so we know people are aware of this, and we know people don't like it. Now, it's hard to deny the fact that these instances that create negative feelings have an effect on our ability to connect with people. And remember, connection is our second stone. So to go a little bit more in depth with connection, and to give you some background information, I'd like to take a few steps backwards. The first thing to note is that a Boston College researcher reported that college students use some form of interactive technology for about eight hours a day. Interactive technologies include tablets, cell phones, laptops, whatever you can use to communicate with another human being. And they're not using it for eight hours a day consecutively, but they're multitasking all day long. And it's easy to see how that's a distraction especially since research shows the mere presence of a cell phone can be a distraction. Basically, researchers took two groups of individuals, they placed one group in a room 
assigned them to a task, and had an experimenter accidentally leave a cell phone in the front of the room. They took the second group, also placed them in a room, and assigned them to a task, but they didn't expose that group to a cell phone. As you probably guessed, the group that was exposed to the cell phone performed tasks less accurately, which suggested that cell phones themselves can serve as distracting stimuli. What this would mean in the real world is that if you're having lunch with a friend and you have your phone out on the table, that has the potential to decrease the quality of your relationship. So, but of course, not, or relationships aren't the only ones affected by cell phone interruptions. In a semi-creepy study done by a researcher <laughs> that was reported in the Journal of New Media and Society, a researcher observed pairs of individuals in public for hours. And they noticed that one of the if one of the individuals accepted a phone call, the other individual exhibited some anxiety-type symptoms. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they had anxiety, but just that they exhibited some of the same symptoms that an anxious person would. And some of those include suddenly becoming interested in all the passersby, reading the menu for the third time, or anything to distract themselves from the fact that they just got ignored. And nowadays, the most common anxiety-type symptom would probably be getting out your phone and trying to engage in your own little side conversation. But why do people have such a hard time putting down their phones in the first place? there's an instant gratification associated with your cell phone. Every time you pick it up, you can find something new, whether that be a text from a friend, an update on Facebook, or something random in the news about Beyonce. And if you don't find something, you can always Google it. But this instant gratification has, come, has become a kind of addiction for many of us, and that's scary. A lot of people don't want to admit it's an addiction, and they talk about it very casually, which is even scarier because that means this is becoming a normal aspect of our society. I've heard of people unintentionally sacrificing promotions due to not being, being able to put their phone away during a meeting. And it's ironic, but it makes sense that responding to someone through your cell phone in front of a real-life person is counterproductive to staying well-connected. Now, I know not all cell phone use is bad, and with smartphones and other devices, you can use technology to build relationships. And you can find people with qualities that you might not be able to find in the environment you live in. And those relationships have the potential to be supportive and good. But that doesn't mean they should take the place of the ones you currently have, nor should they threaten the potential for new relationships to be formed outside of the virtual world. Humans were born to interact face to face. It's good for our health. Evidence even suggests it, it reduces our risk for depression. So as a fellow human and a fan of healthy connections, I'd like to help keep them intact. And that's where curiosity comes into play, the third and final stone. Not only would I like to bring to light how much people strongly dislike cell phone interruptions, but I'd like to convince people that our communication skills shouldn't have to die with the advancement of technology. It's been said that the impact of technology on our lives has led to shallow, superficial relationships that don't require the time, attention, commitment, or effort that a quality connection needs. Do we really want to continue down this path? My first suggestion, of course, is to stop using cell phones at inappropriate times. Inappropriate times are when you're with a friend, when you're watching a movie, or doing anything that involves in-person interaction. But I also think that we can remove some temptation to help ourselves out because we are human. And a creative approach to this was an idea that I heard on the radio a while ago, that if you and a group of friends go out to eat at a restaurant, you should all place your cell phones in the middle of the table, and whoever can't keep from looking at their phone should have to foot the bill. But really, if you wanted to do this even better, everybody should have their cell phones away and not on the table because remember, the mere presence of a cell phone can be a distraction. So to take it a step further, a restaurant in Los Angeles, Bucato, implemented a no cell phone policy. And this forced customers to communicate with each other. 
and the restaurant's business was pretty successful until their head chef left and they had to close. But there are other examples, like one restaurant in Pennsylvania known as Sarah's Corner Cafe that, that implemented a 10% discount to those who didn't use their cell phones. And I propose that something similar can be offered on college campuses. Not a discount, but a cell phone free zone. And I'm not saying that the entire campus should be turned into a cell phone free zone because people would freak out. <laughs> but it would be a good idea to have a place on campus where students could go and know that they won't be interrupted by a cell phone and where they can be aware of their own cell phone use. Essentially, it would be a place for students to deal with their addiction. And this idea doesn't even have to stay on college campuses. You can take it home with you by making the decision not to use your cell phone at the dinner table or wherever your family spends time together. I actually asked students on my survey if they would prefer at least one cell phone free zone on campus, and the response to this question was alarmingly negative, with most opposed to the idea. I felt rejected, but more importantly, I felt like I hadn't gotten the chance to explain my case before they shot the idea down. So now that I'm talking to an audience, I can reach more people with this solving mindset. And at the very least, I would like to make the wheels turn in people's heads and spark conversation, hopefully in the absence of a cell phone. So now that you've heard my idea, there's something that I want to share with you that can be done right now. I'm going to ask you to do something, and it's more for yourselves than it is for me. I want everyone in this room to make a promise to try to use your cell phone less when you're with another person. Try to have it hidden. Don't even have it out. And we can make a conscious effort in one conversation every week, and when we feel more comfortable, we can increase it to two conversations, and then eventually every day. The next time you think about pinging up your phone in the middle of a conversation, remember that it's the small moments, like when someone is telling you about your day. Those moments create connections. And we want to make sure everybody around us feels valuable. And that's not something that can be done with the click of a send button or the swipe of a screen. But if we all do this, we can enjoy a few more conversations, we can laugh a few more times, and we can notice some of the little things about each other that we might otherwise miss. So if this is important to you and you're going to try to use your cell phone less, raise your hand. OK, everybody look around so you know who to watch. <laughs> now you can put your hands down. Hopefully, you remember your promise and you start making positive connections with the people around you starting today. Thank you. <laughs>